It's a kind of magic. Hello, Internet. My name is Steve. Welcome to RIFO. In my last video, Aiden Alcium sharded, and those 16 shards spread throughout the Cosmere, each with a specific intent and a portion of the power of creation, basically. That power is known as investiture. The investiture that's associated with a shard has to be filtered through that shard's specific intent, which means if someone tries to gain access to a shard's investiture, they have to do it in a way that the shard itself has set up. We know of five planets that have shardic investiture on them, and 11-ish actual magic systems that use a shard's investiture, or at least that we've seen in use. Here's a quick rundown of each system, as well as categorizations to make each magic system distinct. So, let's get invested. First, in order to use investiture, you need to have a focus and an intent. Realmatically speaking, in order to access spiritual energy, you need a physical trigger and cognitive direction. In most cases, this ability is also written into your spiritual DNA, so not just anyone can use it. With the investiture on Scadriel, which is the Mistborn planet, the focus, or trigger, are specific alloys of metal, and those alloy laws must be followed if you want to use the magic. With Allomancy, different metals that are consumed and then burned will grant different effects. The focus is the metal, the intent is the use of the metal. It's been described as a closed concept manifestation of investiture. The intent is fairly fixed. The investiture itself comes from preservation, so your own energy is preserved, which makes Allomancy an end positive type. It's like having a checking account with a really awesome interest rate. You put in a dollar and you get a thousand dollars back. With Farukami, however, whatever attribute or ability you store in a metal mine, you get the same out, which makes it end neutral. Basically, it's like hiding money under your mattress. It's a little more flexible than Allomancy because you can pick and choose what you want to store and what you want to use, as well as having some pretty intense spiritual applications that we haven't even seen yet. So I call Farukami a variable intent system. It's the balance between preservation and ruin. Now, ruin is the shard of origin for hemolymph and it usually requires another person's death to access, and negative, effectively stapling part of their soul onto your own. It's like getting mugged, then murdered. Now there's no prerequisite for using hemolurgy. Anyone with the right knowledge could use it. The spike is what actually channels the investiture, making hemolurgy one of the few mechanical methods, rather than physical. And the potential for its application to create connections that no shard designed or intended makes hemolurgy one of the most fluid intent magic systems in the cosmos, or open concept manifestations. The more I learn about hemolurgy, the ickier it is. Scadriel ain't the only planet with more than one form of investiture. Cell has five, and they all share a similar focus. Accessing investiture on Cell is sort of a key and lock situation. Things have to be the right shape. They're often referred to as programming-esque, because the shapes can build on each other and become incredibly complex and really, really specific. Spoilers, if you haven't read Elantris, go la 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 for 10 seconds, or just skip ahead. The basic Aeon is the shape of Aralon. The map of my pawn is in every soul stamp. Dumbledore's scar on his knee is a perfect map of the London Underground. Okay, you're good. The relationship of Selish magics to the shards, devotion and dominion, is tricky. Gaining access isn't genetic like Allomancy or Farukami, but it's close. As near as I can figure, you have to be born in a specific dominion and be particularly devoted to something, or at least devoted enough to learn all of the crazy specifics on how to use it. For example, only people that are born in Aralon can become Elantrians and use Aeon Door, which is basically drawing glowing runes in the air to make specific things happen. The specificity of effects you can cause with Aeon Door makes it incredibly open or fluid in intent. The investiture is pulled straight from the door, which, if you don't know what that is, check out a few of my other videos that will explain that for you. Another Selish magic is Cheshan, which is basically like magical Tai Chi. It pulls from the door as well, with different body movements having different effects, like gaining speed or power. We haven't seen much else of what it can do, but given the general complexity of investiture systems on cell, it's safe to assume that it's at least a variable intent. 
Of all the Selish magics, Dakor is the weird one. The bones of its users actually shift and change shape in order to channel the investiture. This one investiture on cell may not actually pull from the door at all, it might just be straight from Dominion. In order to use it, some form of domination is required, possibly killing someone. I think this makes it an end negative magic system. We haven't seen the breadth of what it can do yet, but given that it's on cell, it's probably at least a variable intent system. The next cellish system, there's so many, is forgery, as seen in The Emperor's Soul, rewriting the history of an object or a person to a plausible alternative. This is accomplished using complex stamps carved by a forger. After the stamp is carved, anyone can apply it, which makes forgery more of a mechanical system of investiture access. Because the change is permanent, as long as the stamp remains intact, there's a net gain in energy so it's end positive. And like all other Selish magics, the specificity of the programming-like access makes it really fluid in its intent. The creepy stepsister to forgery is blood sealing. As you could guess, blood is used as ink for magic stamps, but at least some of the investiture is coming from the door, so technically it's end positive. Like forgery, it's a mechanical-ish system, but from what we've seen, its intent is more limited. Keeping tabs on somebody or reanimating the bones of your dead enemies because that's the only way anyone will want to hang out with you. Sorry, weed fingers. Speaking of reanimating the dead, next up is Awakening. The form of investiture there is called Breath, and every person born on Nalthus is endowed with this extra investiture. That can then be given away, and if you accumulate enough breaths, you can use it to effectively give life to inanimate objects. Because you get back after you awaken something, the same amount of breaths as it took to awaken it, it's an end-neutral system. And as long as you have a good enough mental picture and a clear spoken command of what you want your awakened object to do, it can do basically anything. So it's an incredibly fluid magic system as well. Since we're on the topic of fluids, that sounds so wrong, this next magic system requires them. Sand Mastery on Taldane. Using your body's own water supply, you can control ribbons of white sand. Kind of like a magic slinky you can move with your mind. The investiture itself actually comes from the sun on dayside, and it's accessed by providing water to the microorganisms that actually coat the grains of sand there. It's similar to Allomancy in that there's a lot you can do with it if you're creative in its application. So fixed intent. The shard on Taldane is autonomy, but we're not really sure how her intent comes into play yet because we haven't seen how someone becomes a Sandmaster. I mean, to access the investiture, you need to give of your body's water, and when you use the investiture, you can create water. So the system is pretty autonomous, but other than that, I got nothing. The last and probably most popular magic system is Surge Binding from the Stormlight Archive on Roshar. Whether it's changing individual gravity, creating illusions, or transforming a stick to fire, Surge Binding is powered by Stormlight and facilitated by bonds to Spren, or splinters of self-aware investiture. In relation to the shards, this requires honoring oaths and self-cultivation. There's a whole lot of things that can be done, 10 surges or fundamental forces of nature that can be manipulated, but you can only access two at a time, which makes this a variable intent system. Quick note about void binding. From what we've seen, it's fairly similar to surge binding, except that it's powered by odium instead of honor. We'll get more deets in the next books. There are other ways to access investiture apart from these magic systems, methods that don't require you to personally be able to focus investiture at all. We know of three. Fabrials, gemstones on Roshar that use Stormlight to do things. Honor Blades, shard blades that were created for the 10 original heralds that grant access to Surge Binding. And the medallions on Scadrial, unsealed ferrochemical metal mines that anyone can access. My next few videos will be digging deeper into these individual magic systems, so be sure to subscribe so you can learn more about your favorite ones. Also, if you haven't gotten your fill of Cosmere exploration, check out a few of my other videos. And be sure to comment below what magic system you think we should delve in first, so I can read and find out.